What's up, Gear Mortals? Trey Xavier here. Today I want to talk to you about editing guitars. I'm going to show you the way that I do it, um, which is pretty simple. Uh, I tend to edit DI guitars whenever possible. Um, I think it's uh, considerably clearer where things should go when you see them as DIs and hear them as DIs rather than seeing the amped signal which tends to be sort of more uniform. When you have DIs it's a lot easier to see individual notes and where things hit and you can move them around in ways that uh, it's just a little less clear when you're using uh, an amped signal. So uh, that's what we've got here today. I'm gonna be using uh, easy mix for all the guitar sounds from tune track. Uh, this is what I use for tracking and uh, and editing guitars um, I'm gonna be using the Keith Merrow conquering patch um, It is my favorite for a number of reasons especially for Editing and the reason I like it so much for editing is because it is fucking merciless everything is so super super clear You can hear every single note. It's unforgiving uh, in every way and I think it sounds really cool too I love the the combination of kind of uh, chunky and a little bit of twang in there anyway it's what I'm gonna be using uh, right now for these so let's get started for the moment we're going to use just this one measure of music this it's a double tracked riff two guitars one panned right and one panned left I'm gonna let you hear it right now in context this it's a snippet one measure Okay, super small and yet so much wrong with it. You may not have caught it on the first listen. Let's try it again. Tell me if you can if you can hear what's wrong. Basically, it's just not tight. So as you can see, the waveforms just don't really line up in a way that's going to make them sound tight. We're going to be doing a combination of visual editing and using our ear to make sure that um, everything is where it's supposed to be. Um, what we're going for here, number one, uh, out of all the different things, is tightness. Basically, when everything lines up really nicely and everybody's hitting their part at the same time, uh, things are going to sound really tight. And in this case, that's good. Tight isn't always good, okay? Sometimes music needs to be sloppy. In this case, if it's sloppy, it's going to sound like crap. Um, this is this it's a power metal song like a prog power metal thing and tightness is paramount So we're gonna take this thing that I so this is my performance. All right uh, It's it's I will readily admit that it is not my finest hour I don't usually do a whole lot of editing on my parts just uh, just to be fair and long long before you get to the editing stage you should do whatever it takes to play it tight and record it right play it tight record it right write that down but uh, if you're an engineer and you're you know editing someone else's material you're gonna you're gonna want to know how to do it uh, especially if you get garbage so here we have kind of garbage today let's take a listen to just one track for right now because we're gonna do them one at a time of course now all by itself it sounds okay but it's the little things that are gonna make it sound off. Let's take a look at the first note. So this first note has a little bit of a slide in it. So we're sliding into the first beat. So it's it's okay that it starts a little bit before the measure. Um, we're gonna leave that just the way it is. In fact, we're gonna leave the first note right where it's at for this one. But this second note is, as you can see, we have missed the mark by quite a bit. So. Um, I'm in slip mode. I'm using Pro Tools right now. This should apply to any DAW that you use. Um, the uh, the names for stuff could be different. I don't know what it's called in Logic, but uh, anyway, in um, in Pro Tools, it's slip mode. We're not in grid mode, so we're not going to be locking to the grid. That's very important. Okay, so I'm going to grab this whole note right here. All right, a little bit before. Okay, and I'm going to separate it from the track okay and then I'm gonna scoot it scoot it just give it a scoot okay until it lines up with the line here um, that should be about right okay now the way that you mask these sorts of 
cuts that you're doing here, I'm taking, I'm dragging, so this is non-destructive editing, right? I'm gonna drag this thing until it kind of lines up. That actually lines up really neatly. That's, a, that's pretty seamless, actually. Um, so now it's pretty well lined up with the line here. And uh, I go back later and uh, fade everything because in Pro Tools it's really easy. You can just hit Command F and um, do some do a preset fade length. So that's pretty handy. So now you can see that this lines up. This one down here does not. So this is the second guitar that's uh, going to be panned the opposite direction of this one to the right, presumably. Let's zoom out a little bit. We're too zoomed in. It's very easy to get too zoomed in and uh, just make it worse rather than, rather than better. All right, so the next couple notes are on. All right, so now this one is early. That presents a different challenge, okay? So if we cut this whole thing out like this and move it, then we're going over this one. Um, so what I like to do is uh, cut it shorter like this, okay, and then boom. Okay, then we're not running over this guy. But this, this note is also early. So rather than cutting this one out again, it's probably early by about the same amount. So look at that. Well, it's I. Right. We can still probably cut this guy out and we can move the whole thing. The idea is that we want it to sound natural, okay? We want it to be perfect or at least tight but still natural. Sometimes you have to make little compromises. So it's really easy to see where a drum hit starts because it's it's so, it's sharp. It's a sharp, like this. Guitar tends to be a little bit mushier, like the attack is not as strong. Drums have a very, very clear attack. Um, and then it's like, and then, it, and then it decays. Guitars do a little, a little up, like this first, and then decay. Drums are like, pew, okay? So uh, there's a little bit more room to move guitars around, I think. It's a little, it, they're easier to work with. So this guy right here is late, and then his friend right after him is early. So we're gonna take that and move it just a smidgen of a pigeon, okay? Now, Basically, you don't want to crowd the notes. So you want to, you don't want to have the end of this one run over the attack of this one because you want to, you want as much attack as you can possibly preserve because, um, like I said, guitars are not the most attacky of instruments. Um, so, yeah, it's better to run over, it's better to have the beginning of a note run over the end of a note like this than the other way around. Let's listen to that with the click on. Okay. So that sounds tight. It sounds like everything's everybody's on. Best way to hear if two things are tight together, you stick them in mono. If you have them in stereo, they're gonna sound a lot tighter than they actually are. Or at the very least, you're gonna hear them you're gonna hear the mistakes as being less uh, obvious. Um, so when in the end they're going to be pan stereo, so that's how you're gonna hear them. But if you have them right on top of each other, it's gonna be way, way more obvious if they're not together. So uh, this is what they sound like on top of each other right now. Yeah, there's some problems, especially right in here. Yeah, we need all these guys to be together. So. So this one uh, sliding, right? Just like before, um, but they start sliding at different spots. I'm actually gonna move this guy back a little bit. I know I said, that's, that's better, there you go. Um, this one, okay. This guy is late to the party. His friend is also late. So these three notes 
these four notes are late. So what I like to do, five, this whole shit is fucking late. Everybody's late. Yeah, all of these are late. A lot of times, somebody played something in time, but starting early or late. So sometimes everything, a whole performance is gonna be slight, or at least, or a section of a performance is gonna be all early or late. That's actually kind of ideal um, because, check this out. Well, they're all gonna be, these are all slightly off by more or less, but we can get, we can ballpark it just by moving the whole shabam. Okay, so now these two are still late, but everything else has more or less fallen into place. So let's grab these guys. Okay, I don't have my, I don't have my presets set up here, so zooming is a little harder than it should be. Okay, so let's pull these guys out. See, they line up um, together. I moved them together and now they're both in place. So they were about the same amount off. So let's hear them on top of each other again and see if we did it. Sounds pretty good. Something sounds weird. Let's zoom in. You might wanna dial them in even a little bit more so like this, okay? Check and see if they're, you know, if they're lining up really well. You can get really, really in depth. You can get, you can check and make sure every little waveform lines up perfectly. I think that would make you a masochist. Um, I don't think it needs to be that, that close, to be honest. Um, like this, these two here are way, way far off. Okay. That sucks but you don't have to necessarily get them as perfectly in time as this. Um, once again, use your ear. Obviously, that's uh, number one rule for all of music. Um, we sort of did this visually, but um, it has a sound, right? And if it's, mm, if it's too perfect, it, it can sound artificial. You don't want that. You want it to sound tight, but natural, or at least I do. That sounds tight and natural to me. Of course, it's not really natural. We just moved just about every single note around. Um, you don't wanna have to do that, but you might have to. Um, it's something that as an engineer, especially if you're like assistant engineer, you, that probably means you're gonna be the guy doing the edits, okay? Um, you, you want to get somebody who can play the shit out of the part and, uh, and all that, but you know, you, you work with what you've got. So now it's tight, tight as balls and it sounds awesome. Let's try this though. Let's listen to just the DIs. That's always a great way to check what you're doing. Yeah, tight. Let's try them in stereo. <laughs> so heavy. So when you're working with DIs, the transients are infinitely easier to see. Infinitely easier. Um, if we take a look at a recorded guitar tone uh, with, you know, the uh, an actual amp sound, I mean, look at this. It's just a big mushy line. Like you can't see where anything goes just about. And uh, it's, it's super duper not ideal for editing, for editing purposes. Eventually the guitar is going to look like this, of course. And uh, you might even still do some editing after that. But like, you know, like what's where, where, what goes where? I don't know, I don't know what I'm looking at. It's a mush, it's a, it's a mush line. You don't want a mush line. Look at this, you can see where every single hit happens in the DI, you can see how long it goes for and when the next one starts, so much better. Okay, so here's one of the most important steps. Once we've edited all these, uh, all these notes, um, we're left with a bunch of cuts. Now, different DAWs handle this differently. Some of them automatically fade 
um, cuts like this, and some of them do not. Uh, as far as I'm aware, uh, Pro Tools does not. Sometimes you can get little pops and clicks when you have cuts like this, okay? So if you need to, then go ahead and fade those little cuts. Um, put little fades over them, cross fades, so that you don't get those pops. All right, so let's hear it in the mix. The mix, it's basically just drums and guitar. So now I have to edit all of the rest of this, and it's going to be kind of time consuming. Um, it's not going to take me as long as it just did, because I don't have to show you the rest of it. But um, this is uh, that's how I do it. Um, I'm not going to say that my way is the best way, just that it works really well for me, and uh, I think the results speak for themselves. And uh, yeah, so I hope you learned something today. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe for more reviews and original content, and I will see you real soon. Today, I wanna to show you how I program drums for my demos. Now, I can't afford to hire a drummer to record parts for every single guitar demo or amp demo, or whatever review that I do. So, um, I rely on stuff like Easy Drummer and Superior Drummer to provide the drum tracks for my songs. So, today we're using Easy Drummer, I'm gonna use the um, Pitch Dark Kit, which I like a lot. I use this often. It's, you know, instant, brutal, punchy metal. Uh, no bullshit, everything sounds pretty great. And it's, you know, pre-made.